Hi, I'm Steve Weirman, and this is the first in a series of videos on how to build your very own text editor application using Java and NetBeans. Uh, this is a little bit more advanced than the previous videos, so if you're new to Java, uh, you might want to check out some of those earlier videos uh, on the Getting Started with Java uh, list on my YouTube channel. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into strings. Now strings are a strange thing in Java in that they are object types, uh, but they are so frequently used uh, that they have some uh, shortcut uh, operations that we can use with them. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call this, it's going to be a Java application. Uh, and we'll call it string example. Um, I'm not going to bother changing the class name. This is just an example. And I'll click finish. And it takes a moment to actually create the project. And here we are. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a string and let's just call it Java and inside that string I'm going to put Java. So that created an object in memory. Uh, the way this works is the variable Java has an address that points to the object the location where that actual data, the name, the string Java is. And it might have, depending on what sort of object it is, it may have other uh, attribute information. Uh, since this is just a string, uh, we can do some nifty things with this. So I could do something like change the uh, string. I can do Java equals Java plus space is awesome. So this is concatenation. Um, we're not going to worry too much about the warning. This will still work. So what this is saying is I'm going to take this string Java and I'm going to tack on to the end of it this string is awesome. Now we'll talk a little bit about how that works in memory in just a minute. But just to show you that this does work, we're going to print this to the console. So system.out.println Java. And if I save that and run it, you'll see in our output window down here, Java is awesome. Now what's happening in memory is what this does here, this line right here, line 18, this creates a new string. And into that string it stores the value Java plus the uh, appended value is awesome and that's our new string. And when that's created the old string is gone. This, this string here, this is completely demolished. Uh, wherever it was in memory, it's, it might still be in memory, but there's, no, uh, there's nothing really pointing to that. To drive this point home, let me create a new string. Let's call this Java2. And I'm going to do this is Java. All right, so now Java 2 will have our original value, Java, and Java will have Java is awesome. So now if I do system.out.println and I do Java 2, it'll still print out Java is awesome, then it will also print out Java. Now this is kind of like the sort of behavior you'd expect if are uh, if we were working with a primitive data type. Because if it were a primitive data type, 
what would happen here is the value would be copied to the new variable. And that's not quite what's happening in the computer in this case. What's happening is the address for this original string Java is being copied to the address for our new string, our new variable Java2. So this Java that's being printed at the end, um, let me just run that again, this Java here, that's our original string Java. That was this string right here. That's not a copy, that's the actual object. Uh, do you really need to know this uh, if you're doing simple uh, programming with Java? Actually, you kind of do. Uh, uh, you, you really should uh, be able to wrap your head around some of the things that are happening in the computer's memory. Uh, because I'm going to change this example around completely. Uh, but keep, keep that question in mind because I got to talk a little bit about how to do input and, um, and then we'll come back to that question for this example. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a string again. Same string. And then I'm going to print out a prompt. Asking the user to type the word Java. Then I have to actually get input from the user. And the way we get input uh, from the console anyway is with a very, very useful class called Scanner. Scanner is not just for getting input from the console, it's also uh, will allow you to get input from text files, uh, from really any streaming input, uh, and it's something that we'll come back to when we start doing the file input and output uh, for our text editor. So what I want to do here is create a new instance of Scanner with system.in. Okay, so this is indicating that where we're going to get our input is actually from standard input from our console. Uh, you'll notice that we've got some red lines here and that's because Scanner's not been imported. Scanner is one of those classes that we don't always use, so we actually have to import it from the package java.util. So fortunately NetBeans makes that very easy. I just click on the light bulb a couple times and it works. Um, but what that light bulb did is it added that line there, import java.util.scanner. All right, moving on. So now let's actually get the input, and we'll store that input in a string. String uh, user input equals in dot next line. Now let's do some comparison. Let's see if the user actually typed in Java. You might be tempted to do something like this. If Java equals equals user input. Whoops. That should be, there we go. Then what we want to do is print out a message. You type Java. Else. Oops. You typed something else. Now this light bulb right here might indicate that something may not be quite right. 
uh, just got a little warning there, uh, but we have no red lines, so our code is syntactically correct Java. Let's run it and see what happens. So it's asking me to type Java. I'm going to type Java. It's telling me I typed something else. Um, so let's close this and see what's going on. The problem with what we're trying to do is that although the values in both of those strings are the same, these are objects. Because they're objects, they have different addresses, different locations in memory, and when we do the double equals comparison, what we're actually comparing is what's in those variables, the variables just being the addresses, not what's being pointed to uh, with those addresses. So we're not comparing the values stored in those strings, we're comparing just the values of those variables. So this is not how you do comparison of objects. The way you do comparison of objects is using a dot equals method. All objects of the comparable subclass, and we may talk about comparable sub subclass in a later video, or the comparable class or interface in a later video, uh, but all objects of that type, that all objects that can be compared, uh, we don't want to use that. We want to use equals. And you'll notice it added a few extra things. Um, for what we're doing, I'm going to scratch the extra things. We don't really need it. Uh, Java.equals user input. Uh, Let's hit run. If I type in Java now, you type Java. Now it's behaving as we would expect it to behave. So that's strings in a nutshell. For more information on strings, if you open up your browser and you search for Java string, what you'll find is I use DuckDuckGo search because I really like it. Uh, going to this Google thing, you'll find the Java uh, documentation API. It's linking to an earlier version, Java 6. Uh, nowadays, we use Java 7. Uh, so I'll add this link uh, to the uh, description of the video. Uh, there's a lot more with strings that you can do. Uh, this is just basic introductory stuff, so you could just be aware of that problem working with strings as special objects in Java. Uh, I hope this video was useful. Uh, check back soon for the next video in this series.